Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm really happy to be here, and I will de not deny my, my fear, my nervousness, uh, but also my excitement. So I know I'm in the right spot. Uh, and Al put things in perspective, I'm sure lovingly, wherever you are, Al, he's, uh, he's like, uh, speaking today, don't choke. <laughs> so now all I have on my mind is please don't choke, which is part of the lesson today, right? Moving from ego into love. So I think for me, um, I've been meditating for 26 years now, and it's really changed my life in a lot of different ways. But one of the ways is, of course, just continuing to open up to be present to what is. And I remember Annie from your talk last week, she was just saying, you know, talking about resisting what is. And if you hear a lot of the teachers uh, who have stepped into this place of enlightenment, one of the things they will say is all stress that you have is simply your resistance to what is. That's it. Your resistance to what is. Easier said than done, right? I mean, uh, we also have been told that we have everything we need to be happy right now, but for some reason, most of us aren't experiencing that. So, you know, it's, it's a nice thought. How do we accomplish that? How do we get into that place? When, um, when I was, uh, found out that I was gonna be speaking a few weeks ago, immediately my workshop begins. Um, because, you know, for my ego, I have my insecurities, I have my arrogance that plays out a lot of times so that people don't actually see that I'm insecure. And um, so it's my, you know, fear of, you know, looking like an idiot or a fool or whatever it is of coming up here. But the awesome thing is, is like my mind gets really busy, but then I begin to really step into this place more and more of noticing my mind and just the busyness and the craziness that it has. And without doubt, from all the expressions that we've had recently, everything going on, we're all going through that, you know, where the mind is just super busy. Um, I had read a study recently, and I've read other studies, but this one just recently I heard that we have about 90,000 to 120,000 thoughts a day. How in the world do you maintain peace? How do you, main, how do you maintain a stillness? You know, be still and know that I am God. How do you connect with that? It's difficult. But what's also true is the more that we end up understanding that we can have whatever thought or whatever feeling we have. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's just a feeling, it's just a thought. Our ego would tell us that we're not enough or that, you know, you know, for me, going through this whole thing, it's like I look at all the people out here and I've gotten to know a lot of you over the, I don't know, seven, eight months I've been coming. I feel such a good heart connection with so many of you. And it's like, so my ego kicks in like, what in the world could I possibly say that is going to somehow, you know, provide something that is worthwhile for people to hear. But then it really hit me like, one of the things I loved about Lauren, and personally I, I adore Lauren, she's fantastic. And I also see that there's this divine perfection that's unfolding exactly as it needs to be. But Lauren used to get up here very courageously. And I, I remember talking to her because she'd find a struggle in the, in the words sometimes of what to say. But what I appreciated is she got up here, she was courageous and she was vulnerable. And that's really what it's about is like showing up and just being authentic, right? It's authentic with, like Carol said, you know, including the ego. It's like being honest about my fears. Like I know sometimes we have a tendency when, you know, when I'm talking, people say, how you doing? I'm like, I'm really scared right now, you know? And they're like, don't be scared, but I'm really okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's just, it's just an experience. It's just a feeling. And one of the things I love about that is it just moves me to be up here because it is scary and it's thrilling. It's a roller coaster ride, you know? It's a roller coaster ride where sometimes, like in Human Awareness Institute, they used to say, there's two ways to ride a roller coaster. One is like you have the fear, but you're in anxiety and just totally terrified the whole time. And the other way is it's like, 
this is scary, but oh man, this is fun, you know? And I think that's what I want to keep moving towards is just embracing the totality of all of my ego and all of my fears and know that it's exactly the way it needs to be. I was uh, attending college in uh, 84 at Ferris State University and I had a speech class. And the teacher, the first day, the teacher just asked us to say our name. I couldn't hear anybody else's name because I was too busy practicing my own name in my head, you know? It's like, like I didn't know it, right? Or didn't know how, but I had to say it just right, you know? But that's how scary it was. And then, then later on, she asked us to ha do a two-minute talk, and we had to do other ones as well. But uh, this might be more information that you want, but I had it coming out both ends for about two weeks there uh, <laughs> just because I was so scared. And if you would have told me that I would be up here talking right now, I'd say you're out of your freaking mind, you know? That's the truth. But something calls us to expand who we are. We all have that calling within us. That, that, and, and I can speak, I know to this group here, I can speak to the fact that we don't want to live a mediocre life. We want to live a spectacular life. A, what I say, the bliss of God. That's what I want. I want whatever God's got, that's what I want. I want that. Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, whoever, I want to experience that bliss. And we've had many teachers that have shown us that that's possible. So, you know, I, I see this whole unfolding happening in here and this absolute, for me, absolute beauty and perfection. I am not surprised at all that it happened. And I'm not surprised it happened the way it happened. Because we're this group out here that is saying, all right, God, Buddha, Jesus, the universe, whatever, help me to expand into the truth of who I am. Help me to awaken who I am. And, and I don't know about you, I'm kind of intense on my path, you know? It's like I've always got to be growing and healing, you know? <laughs> but like Eckhart Tolle says, you have to be careful of that because if you're focused on growing and healing, you're always in growing and healing. And, and that's not always good. You know, have some fun, play time. That's my wife. She, she reminds me to come back, you know. It's okay. Let's just go out and play and have some fun, you know. But um, I know that because of our desire to grow and expand, something that th this whole happening right now, it's undeniably perfect. This is the work. This is what we call forth. This is it, because we say, all right, God, give me a lesson. No, not that lesson, <laughs> something, something different than that, right? We get into you know, our heads about what our attachments and our desires are, but that's where the ego's at. The ego wants to have it a certain way, right? The ego needs to have it this way or that way, or, or we want to lash out and blame, which is, which is fine. We can do any of that that we want, but I don't think that's going to lend its way to peace and joy that we're looking for. And I know for myself personally, if I don't take 100% responsibility for my life, it will always be, the problem will always be somewhere out there. And, and like Eckhart Tolle says, the situation is never the problem. It's never the problem. Your reaction to it is or can be, right? So I'm, I'm finding more and more for myself, like just this unbelievable beauty that keeps happening as I keep surrendering to what is and knowing the perfection of it. Like when this whole thing happened, I was shocked. But at the same time, I was thinking to myself, this is powerful. What a powerful group we have that we would manifest in a way to rock us to our core, to shake our foundation. That's how powerful we are. We manifest in a way that calls forth that we expand into this brilliance of who we are. Isn't that powerful? You can look at it however you want, and it's all good. But for me, I am so freaking excited about the possibilities. And I, and I would have loved for Lauren to stay too, you know, honestly. 
But now I'm looking, you know, what I've been asking to come up here and speak, and I speak at Unity Churches, and, and you know, I do a fair amount of speaking, but I, I really wanted to speak here because this is my home, you know. I've been here for seven or eight months, but right away I'm like, this is it. This is where I want to be at. What an awesome group of people, and just, I mean, I come in here and, and uh, just the greeting, and Carol does this beautiful reading. We got Johanna that does this incredible meditation that doesn't even like teaching meditation. <laughs> I, if you liked it, I wonder what it would be like then, you know? <laughs> and, the, and the toning was just so incredible, beautiful, and the drumming. I mean, what a remarkable home we have. Please, I invite you to not take that for granted. I feel so unbelievably grateful for that. My ego, my mind, it's busy all the time. But this morning I got up because I, a long time ago when I started speaking, I was clear that it wasn't for me to write down my talk. It just wasn't. And I tried it at different times and it's like it just did not work for me. And I think part of that is because not knowing what is going to happen can be terrifying. It can be really scary, that mystery, the unknown. Where is this going to go? Will we maintain what we have? But I'm trusting and having faith more and more every time I talk, and I'm not sure what's going to come out of my mouth, or whether people will like me because I want people to like me. You know, that's my, you know, it's my ego wanting to be somebody. You know, and uh, I remember a, a teacher, maybe some of you have studied with him, um, Sadhguru Jag, Jagi Vasudev. Anyone studied with him before? And, you know, he said, it's so interesting. Everybody's trying to become somebody when nobody is really the place to be. You know, so, but, but our ego wants to be somebody. We want to, you know, maybe be famous or successful or looked at in positive ways. And so what the ego will do is the ego will identify with certain things. It will identify that I'm not good enough or I'm bad or I'm mean or whatever it says on that end. And it'll also identify with things to try to build up the ego, which is, you know, like, I'm a great speaker, or I'm a great meditator, or, you know, whatever that is, it's still the ego. Now, there's nothing bad or wrong about it, but it does invite us into mindfulness, awareness. Because the more I become aware and mindful of what's going on within myself, I can have any thought that's there. And so I get up this morning and my mind is very busy. You know, I'm noticing how scared I am, how nervous I am, what will happen today, I wonder, you know? It's all going on. So I start, I start pacing around my, uh, I have a little pacing ground, you know, of, <laughs> of that I'm just trying to be present and aware of as I'm walking, I'm just noticing all these thoughts. Like, I'm noticing the thought, um, Boy, I really hope this talk goes well. But, but who is that? Who is that saying that? Is that me that needs the talk to go well? Because I'm connecting more and more with that part of me that what they, what they speak to to say, um, we do have everything we need to be happy right now in this moment. And, and that, that part of me that is at peace and in love and, and in joy. But my, my ego is like, I hope this goes well. But, but that's what it does. And there's nothing bad or wrong about it, like I said. But if we are not mindful and aware of it, it can add stress. That's where, that's where the ego, the mind can be damaging if we're not being aware of what's really going on in our lives. So... I feel more and more clear that, like, I don't need to change anyone. I don't need to fix anyone. I don't need to change or fix the world. 
Now, some of you might say, well, I don't know about that. There's a lot of craziness going on in the world. I'm not opposed to, you know, and I'm, I'm all for, you know, contributing in a way of love and peace and joy. But I also see and I watch the teachers out there, the teachers that are in this place of peace, no matter what is going on. And if we can simply be aware that the mind is saying, I need, I, I, I can't stand this president. What in the world is he doing? If we can just notice that, who is that saying that? Is that your divine essence that's saying that? Or is that the ego in the mind needing things to be different than they are? So a friend of mine asked me a long time ago, do you think if God could heal the world, that God could heal the world? And I go, yeah, absolutely. He said, why doesn't he? But here we are. Here we are each learning the possibilities of who we are. We're learning. We're learning that we're someone that can make a difference. My teacher said, and I might have mentioned this at the meditation, the brief talk that I had before, he said, you can take all the new age people you want in the world. I'll take one person that steps into enlightenment to accomplish more than all of them. Such a powerful statement. But it goes to show you when we're in our heads, when we're in our mind, how much judgment we carry around. When I step into this place of peace where I'm just watching it all, all of my judgments fall away. And I think, you know, we talk about forgiveness. I think what happens when we actually step into the truth of who we are and all of this judgment that falls away throughout the whole world of all the people that we think, well, they're too bitchy, they're too this, they're too that. All of that falls away when you're just being fully present in the moment and you're in that divine essence of who you are. It is the ultimate forgiveness. The ultimate forgiveness of yourself and everybody around you. Because you see that you are something more than the mind. You're something more than the ego or needing to be somebody. I feel incredibly grateful at this gift that we've been given, all of us, not just here at the center of going on. That's definitely a gift in my eyes. Everything going on. And I, and I asked myself, what would it be like if somebody like a Donald Trump wasn't, if we, if we impeached him, what would it be like? I'm finding him to be an incredible teacher for me. <laughs> That's the truth. And I've gone through plenty of judgment with him, and I still have plenty of judgments with him. But he's an incredible teacher to me. I don't know why he's there, but I do know that we are a group. We are a congregation or whatever that has the ability to transcend that to transcend the judgment and, the, and contribute in a way that adds love and peace and joy to the world. That's who we are. I have no doubt where this center is going. No doubt. I'd like to just finish with a prayer if I can. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, we are here before you and with you within us to help to awaken to the truth, to the full potential, to the love, and to the joy of who we are. We don't want to live a mediocre life. Show us what we need to do to embrace our lives, to embrace the totality of who we are. Help us to be mindful and aware of the busyness and craziness of our mind so that we don't get trapped into the, the unconsciousness that can drag us down this road of suffering. Oh, dear God, we, we, we want to experience the bliss of life. We have seen it out there. 
We have had teachers that have shown us the way. Now we ask you to help lift us up into our hearts. Help us to be all that we can be. And in this journey of the expansion who we are, help us to help us it for it to be a joyful journey, a journey of playfulness and laughter and fun, and to not take it quite so seriously. We give all of our burdens to you, all of our projections or needing to figure things out that take us further into the head. Right now, help us to be present with the beauty and magnificence of who we are, not out of arrogance, but out of humility and innocence. And for that, we are grateful. Amen.